what's going on everyone we're going to take a look at the nasdaq 100 we're going to look at the overall chart from the daily perspective and we're going to kind of see exactly where potentially we could be heading now there's one thing that i do want to point out right so you know the truth be told um you know cpi data uh fed talks um any type of massive headline um jobs report cpi all of that stuff yes is in fact going to sway the markets but here's one thing that a lot of newer traders i would say right so i've been trading now for around seven and a half years going on eight um here's one thing that i am going to say a lot of newer traders they kind of search high and low for this news they kind of take everything that is going on you know in the macro you know kind of financial space you know very very to heart um and what i've learned over the years is if you constantly chase you know what is the cpi numbers what is the jobs report you know what when is uh jerome powell speaking you know what's going on on cnbc all of this stuff if you do that you're going to mentally drain yourself physically tire yourself out and it's going to you know realistically force you to make bad moves so you know earnings reports all of that stuff is obviously going to move the market i'm not going to be one to tell you that you know if jerome powell says something that the market's not going to explode or completely you know crash um on an intraday perspective but if you kind of eliminate the noise right if you just eliminate the noise and you stop looking for you know what is the interest rates going to what is this going to and you kind of just take everything from a macro perspective and look at everything technically you will be a lot less stressed. You won't really care about when Jerome Powell's talking. You won't really need to know what the CPI data are. You'll know and understand that these things are going on, but you don't really need to, you know, dive into what exactly is said or how much we're raising rates or this, that, and the other, right? So, you know, what I have obviously today, um, you know, market was down, okay? But the market has been down for five days. So today, you know, we had jobs report and we had the silicon valley bank um kind of blow up right so we all know what was going on we know that we we you know it doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of look on social media and see you know everyone kind of talking about that cool so that moved the market down great does it matter no because if you're a trader this is one thing that you kind of need to really you know understand as a trader you need to be able to trade long and short. If you are someone who just constantly buys dips or buys breakouts and you think that, you know, you can do that in any kind of market, you're going to be rudely mistaken. You're going to get chopped up. You're going to lose a lot of money and you're not going to really know what to do when we go into distribution. If you don't know what distribution is, you know, it, it's just a form of consolidation, right? Contra uh, prices get very, very contracted and condensed. We kind of accumulate before a next leg higher or a next leg lower. That's what distribution means. Um, you know, when we go into a bear market or we have down days, you're really not going to know how to trade it, right? You're going to constantly be looking to try to catch a falling knife and bounce and bounce and bounce. When if you just kind of sit back and be patient and kind of pick your spots accordingly, you'll do a lot better. So kind of ignore the news, right? And focus on technical analysis. A lot of you guys who watch my channel understand that I'm using the big boy chart here. The reason why I call it the big boy chart is just due to the fact that this is the main technical analysis chart that I like to use, you know, for the prior day to kind of do my homework and see exactly, you know, where potentially uh, we could be heading, you know, what stocks or indexes have the most room, what looks like it's setting up and, you know, ultimately what's going to give me the best trade of the day. Realistically, you know, if you kind of look at the overall picture here, we've been making lower highs for the past five days. So the short term trend has been bearish. So if you're trying to play long more than you're trying to short this past week, it probably didn't work out for you that well. Now, does it matter what Jerome Powell said in the two day testimony? No, because if you're looking at the technical analysis, you're going to kind of see the daily candles. Where did we stop? What levels are we holding as support? If those levels get broken, let's go ahead and short. If we decide to rally and there's some sort of intraday bounce, maybe there'll be a sneaky pivot where we can kind of play to the long side. And what I mean by that is sometimes, you know, we kind of wash out and we have like an hour or two bounce. Sometimes it provides an opportunity for us to get in and take some cash flow on a scalp to the long side. So it really doesn't matter what is going on in the news. 
uh, what bank is going under. You know, as it stands right now, this is a triple Qs that we're looking at, which is going to be the NASDAQ 100. It's going to consist of all your mega cap and tech stocks. This is the first close below the 200 day moving average as well as the 50 day moving average. This is not good at all. Now, is it the end of the world? No. This is the first test that we've had of the 50 day moving average ever since we broke out from the 50 day moving average going all the way back to January. So if we kind of look at where this whole rally started from January and a little bit of February, if we look back here, this essential breakout has not been tested until today. So could this be just a healthy back test to kind of accumulate and trap some long position or short positions here to kind of screen back up to the upside? It's entirely possible. If we do get over 297, 298, this, you know, in theory, if we do close over that, could essentially come and run up to 308 or potentially 314. But as it stands now, the market sentiment is very, very uh, weary. They are very, the market is very cautious. There is not a lot of buyers in the tape. A lot of people are not trusting that we are gonna come back up. Um, there is heavy options flow coming in from betters placing big money bets. I mean, this whole week, I was pretty much trading Tesla and kind of sitting in some runners for the past three days. And I seen, you know, starting off with 185 puts, 180s, 170s, 165s, 165s, 165s. You know, when you have that much institutional options flow, and I'm not talking about small bets coming across the flow, you know, 10, 15, 20,000, that's, that's like me, right? You know, I might play Tesla with 10, 15, 20 grand. That's not going to move the needle. No one's going to really care about a, you know, $10,000 bet. But when you start seeing million dollar bets coming for short-term expiration this week, next week's expiration, this month's expiration, uh, you know, deep out of the money, there's something here that needs to be concerning. These people are not uncertain. Now, you know, could they be wrong? Could they get trapped? That's entirely possible as well. But you kind of have to also go with what is happening in the overall markets. If we look at the triple Qs where we kind of close today, we closed right at this lower level of support here, which is the 150 day simple moving average. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, if we start to clean out this whole channel from today as well as the 2nd of March, if we kind of confirm today's lows, those low prices being around $287.40, we've got a little bit of uh, support here at 286. You know, you could see a little bit of a dead cat bounce. This is a five day decline here. So could we get a little bit of an inside bar day? Could we get a little bit of a bounce? Yes. Do you really want to go, you know, just because we get one day or even two days worth of consolidation or green days back up to the upside, rush to go load your long positions and, and think that, you know, this sell-off is over? Absolutely not. You want to be a little bit more cautious. If you do happen to find a, sub, a supreme setup to the long side that's going to give you maybe a dollar, two dollars cash flow on a scalp, you know, I'll never tell anyone not to take the trade, but just understand this. Please do me a favor and size down on any long trades or any long scalps that you take this week, regardless if it runs five, six, seven, eight points in your favor. You know, it doesn't have to. Right now, we are we are below all levels of macro support here. The momentum is definitely down. I could see a little bit of a one to two day rally, a little bit of a dead cat bounce here, potentially back up into to, into the 295 or 297 area before we do lose this. However, if we just kind of pop a little bit Monday or Tuesday and then quickly get rejected and come right back down and lose this whole channel here, if you kind of look going back to the original kind of breakout spot, original breakout spots here, our second original break, uh, our second uh, breakout spot is here. If you kind of look at this whole back test now that we have on the overall triple Q's index, if we start to confirm this bottom channel here, our next stop is going to be 283. That's a $5 move to the downside on the overall index. That's a big move. That's almost about uh, 1.5% uh, decline on the NASDAQ 100. And with that, you're going to see a lot of stocks start to really open up their channels to the downside and get very, very aggressive. Um, we did have some aggressive downward pulls this week, but a lot of these stocks you know, are still on a uh, phenomenal run from 
just just this year in january so that's one thing that we do need to kind of uh, look out for as soon as we do start to clear this bottom here my next price target on the triple q's is going to be around that 284 level okay so 284 is going to take us into the 100 day simple moving average now if we do get one or two more days of selling before we get any type of significant dead cap bounce I would look to try to play the bounce off this area here, right around between 283 and 284. What you're gonna wanna see is either us come down here, tag this and aggressively push off, and then use that low as your stop, or what you're gonna wanna do is see this break down, okay, lose this area, and then reclaim it. Once we reclaim it after losing it, that's when you're going to want to get long and again smaller size size down we're going to be looking at a 286 287 price target and then we would be looking at a 290. if we are going to stall i could see a stalling between 290 and 292 stalling out here consolidating and then coming crashing down i will warn everyone this if we do start to lose this 284 level here this whole original breakout if we take this orange line here this 284 mark which is like i said the 100 day simple moving average and we kind of just go left and scroll back in time and we go back in time and we go back in time and we go back in time that is taking us to our original breakout spot here on the 20th of january where we got our first engulfing candle here coming off this rising 10 day moving average in which really started to propel that nice run up all the way until around the beginning of february so mind you if we lose 284 we've got a tremendous amount of room down to 272 that is going to get very very aggressive you're going to see stocks aggressively getting pulled five six seven eight nine ten points depending on what you're playing if you're playing something like nvidia or tesla you know tesla is already down tremendous in the past week but if we look at nvidia right if i just quickly pull up a chart like nvidia because i do trade and follow nvidia very often this today is the first test of the 20-day moving average ever since the earnings gap up okay so we've kind of held this channel nvidia has been providing some trades to the long side and it's been holding up uh, fairly well considering what's been going on this past week it did have a significant red day two days ago on thursday and it did have one today on friday now if nvidia starts to confirm so for example if we gap up or we open up green and then we kind of trickle down here and we start to lose this 20-day moving average at 227 nvidia has got a hell of a lot of room down all the way to 210 that is going to be a macro trade Trade. this trade will make your PL for the month if you play it correctly what you would like to see is a little bit of a dead cat bounce before we short now if the market gaps down on Monday we're gonna have to look at another area the next area that I would be looking at here if we do gap down is gonna be around two hundred and twenty four dollars below two hundred and twenty four dollars does have that gap to fill down to 217 so just kind of keep that in mind that would be the first price target below 224 is in 227 even if we do open up higher than this 20-day moving average here and then lose it up here at around 227 I would be looking at it at an initial price target of around 216 217 so just kind of keep that in mind our ultimate measured potential move not saying that we do have to get down here but this is ultimately look how much space is here right i want to make one comment look at this blue line and look at this yellow line there's not a lot of room this line to this line there's not a lot of room these lines are stacked this 50 moving average here and this 100 ema is stacked there's not a lot of room here a lot of support so let's say for example let's just you know make a generic scenario here let's say we're trading somewhere in this range here you don't really have a whole lot of room between here and here and then here and then here there's not a whole lot of room there's a little bit of room here that you can probably take advantage of a cash flow move but if you kind of look at this empty airspace this is letting you know that besides the prior day's channels here, this gap to be filled, and then these two uh, days here between the March 1st and the March 2nd, besides that, there's nothing down here. It's open airspace. So definitely if the queues start to give up today's lows and we start to tread down towards this 283, 284, a stock like NVIDIA is going to be a stock that you're going to want to watch. Again, there's a lot of lines on my chart for a reason. I know exactly what everything is on this chart and I know how to navigate it. If you guys are looking for a strategy where you can kind of sit back and not have to worry about, you know, all the high volatility within the first five minutes, what's confirming, what's breaking out long, what's 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 breaking down, what confirmed pre-market. If you don't want to worry about all that nonsense and you want to actually find trades, whether you're a scalper, 
a day trader or a swing trader if you want to find trades that have measured potential moves dollars i'm not talking about you know getting into a trade and taking 20 or 30 cents i'm talking about taking one two three four five i took nine dollars eight nine dollars off tesla this week to the downside um so you want to find measured potential moves okay it doesn't matter what type of time frame trader you are i'm going to show you how to slow down this whole process join evolutiontraders.com you're going to get access to coaching you're going to get access to mindset and psychology help when it comes to trading entering and exiting trades you're going to get access to my two video courses outlining how i use this strategy and how you guys can implement it no matter what your account size is um, it can work for options players or equity players. It can even work for Forex. It can even work for uh, cryptocurrencies. It can work for futures. I've been trading a ton of futures lately. I had a really good week trading futures, actually started trading the ES. Uh, normally was trading NQ, but started to trade the ES this week. I really liked it. I really enjoyed playing those uh, mini contracts over there on the ES. But again, if you guys want to trade and maybe, per, maybe you guys don't have enough money to trade, you don't feel like you have enough money to trade, I can get you guys set up with prop firms, get you guys funded six figures, 100,000, 50,000, whatever you guys want um, to trade futures, or you guys can actually trade stocks as well. So if you want to trade NVIDIA and you want to trade Tesla, and maybe you want to trade one, two, three, four, five lots on those uh, particular stocks, I work with a great prop firm uh, that can get you guys funded up to a million dollars on the equity side to trade these stocks. Um, again, let me know in the comment section or come into the discord through evolutiontraders.com and I will get you guys all set up. But again, guys, let's slow the game down here. Let's not worry about the outside news. Let's really focus on the charts and the technical analysis because no matter what they say, good, bad, negative, um, you know, neutral, it doesn't really matter. The stocks still have to break through our levels before we can take a trade. So if they want to push them through our levels that we're already watching, that's fantastic because all that's gonna do is accelerate our gains. And then we're gonna also know when to stay out of the market when it's not really, you know, a good idea or when there's not a lot of value right and for day traders we need to have value we can't just be taking trades just for the sake of taking trades there's so many social media traders out there that like to post up these flashy gains and it seems like everyone is taking you know 25 million trades right off the open and, and everyone is making five thousand percent you know right off the open or it always seems like you know if you're on social media it always seems like someone was always sitting in the stock before it dropped a thousand percent someone was always holding a stock long before it went up five thousand percent guys all of that stuff is nonsense most of that stuff is nonsense um, if you're looking to take a thousand dollar account to a hundred thousand dollar account i'm going to be the first person to tell you that's going to be extremely extremely hard uh and if not impossible you need capital you need money in this business you can't come into this business with a thousand dollars and expect to make fifty thousand dollars in six months you know it's just it's possible but it's just not possible i hope that kind of makes sense and i hope that resonates with some of you guys out there who are realists again i'm not here to blow smoke up anyone's butt and and, and try to tell you guys that you can turn 500 dollars into you know fifty thousand dollars but you know at this day and age and, and where we've come with the whole trading industry as a whole if you know what you're doing and you know risk management and you have a strategy that works which i do have a strategy that works my team has a strategy that works you know do we win every trade of course not i'm only i am only a 62 percent win rate trader okay 62 percent. so what that means is i lose four five sometimes even uh in a week out of my 10 trades okay and i'm still profitable because it's not about you know how many trades you win it's about how much you're winning and how much you're losing you know a lot of times i'm risking 50 cents 80 cents a dollar to make dollars so when you can risk cents to make dollars that is what makes sense so i hope that makes uh everything very very clear to you guys but if you guys do want to learn how this is done and you want to join the online community and start trading with other traders make sure to go to evolutiontraders.com and i will see you guys on the inside